or Bow in the Dagger of Amun Ra, a uh, game from Sierra, released around the same time as uh, King's Quest VI. When was that, Shaw? Uh, 1992. There we go. Good old 1992. Uh, so one thing you're going to notice about this game is that it's got a significant upgrade in graphics. Mm-hmm. Because uh, starting with King's Quest V, which I kind of use the King's Quest series as just my point of reference for uh, just a timeline of Sierra... Uh, it marked a start of just kind of higher quality games from Sierra, uh, more detailed backgrounds and characters. Uh, they started getting better voice actors uh, with King's Quest VI. I'm curious how Laura Bow will stack up against that. Um, there are some voices that are actually really nice, uh, mm-hmm. some that are charming in how uh, silly they are. And, uh, oh man, one in particular that I'm excited to show you. That won't be mm-hmm. in this video, but... Uh, <laughs> Let's not spoil the surprise. Yeah. Oof. Uh, um, I am, uh, we are, much like the Colonel's Bequest, um, I'm completely blind to Laura Bow here. Uh, I did have one death spoiled for me, unfortunately, because I, I uh, watched a funniest death in video game videos. Oops. So I'm looking forward to the context behind this death. And I have not uh, seen this death yet. Oh. Uh, yeah, so this will be interesting for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still working my way through the game. Uh, so that'll be kind of fun. So, uh, we're both, uh, sort of blind, but not really, because I kind of know what's going on. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it looks like a pretty fun game. Uh, we enjoyed, uh, going through the last Laura Bow so much that we thought that it would be fun to kind of see where she evolved. Mm -hmm. This, unfortunately, was the last Laura Bow game, which is a shame, because, uh, I actually really like the concept. Mm -hmm. I love the 1920s. Uh, Laura's kind of a fun character. There's potential to the concept that, sadly, uh, it seems like it did not have enough time to... Uh... To be realized fully. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be nice almost to see her come back in almost a Phoenix Wright style type of gameplay. Um, just in, like, finding clues, talking to people. I don't mean, like, the, the core battles, mm-hmm. but, like, the investigations would be kind of fun for Laura Bow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, enough preamble, let's dive right into the game. All right. So, presumably we will be on a boat at some point. May or may not be the Titanic. Will we? Probably won't be the Titanic. I hope not. That would, uh... (laughs) This is quite a long intro, but, uh, kind of fun. Okay. One thing I really like about the graphics here is they almost seem, uh, painterly? Yeah, it's Hmm. something that I've been meaning to look into. Because, again, this era of Sierra, uh, they do have decent backgrounds to them and I've always wondered if uh, if they painted them in acrylics and that boat isn't moving I <laughs> it's, like it's, it's not really going anywhere oh. oh intrigue that's how I sleep too <laughs> well fair oh, oh wow. I need a hug good night <laughs> hug oh no that's not how you hug wait I'm terrible at hugs oh god I'm so sorry well I'll just fix this mistake <laughs> I... No one will ever know. <laughs> uh, the maid's gonna come in and be super confused. You're on a boat. Throw him out a window. Well, the porthole's kind of small. So he's just. So imagine he... if you tried to get him through there and like got stuck. He just left him in a trunk. Well, that's fine. So here's your sassy 1920s music. Mm-hmm. So sassy. Oh who? Oh. Oh, it's a it's a uh, distinguished looking gentleman. Uh, there is no time to correct this most grievous misunderstanding. <laughs> very, this game is very racially sensitive. <laughs> yeah, I think he has something smeared Stay on your fez, there, boy. Way, oh, Jesus, I didn't even notice the an inch of your life. Surely you can find a way to accommodate everybody's wishes. <laughs> Who are you to tell me what I can do with my own property? And why are your lips so red? Your property? I put what on lipstick, it is no business have? of yours. <laughs> Ugh, I will the never do that voice again, that's super ugly. The Egyptian antiquity <laughs> service. So if you don't like it, I suggest you waddle on back to Egypt mm, yes. and complain to your own government. Mm, 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 mm. Have I mentioned I'm uh, an asshole? Mm, if it was not uh, immediately this obvious, yes, this is diplomacy. kind of what it's I'm going for, for your in my life. Acceptance of the I, fi- situation. I find it kind of weird how we have like the boxes for their heads, but yet you, their Scott heads just kind of frankly, pop over it. I'll get used to it. It's not consistent. Uh, you're... 
It's consistent oh, with the rest of the game. Me, you malodorous little man. Ugh, malodorous. Mr. That's Garkus, mean. There are some who would rather fight back than allow their country to be stripped of its <laughs> national treasure. Politics. <laughs> Any fat savage who lays a finger on my exhibit or threatens me so he's basically a will super find douche. himself mm -hmm. in deep trouble. Do I make myself clear? As clear as the water of the oasis, Mr. Carter. Did, oh, did you so get that I'm Egyptian? I, I could make a couple more references if you like. So this guy's name is Carter, which is presumably a reference to, uh, I believe the name is Howard Carter, who uh, discovered Tutankhamun's tomb. Ah, oh, there we go. I didn't realize that. Hmm. I feel kind of ashamed because I really loved uh, Egyptology yeah. growing up. I, I really wanted to be an Egyptologist. Sure is heavy, uh, Mr. Sure is heavy. Bars I wanted to be an Egyptologist as a kid, mainly because Mummy's Alive. Best show ever. I also <laughs> love that show. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. hmm. But I wanted to be an Egyptologist before Mummy's Alive, so I'm way cooler than you. Oh, you hipster. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I guess this is kind of like a, a cast... A... New Orleans, one week yep. later. A roll call here. Are you sure you've got everything? Yes, I would yes. like to uh, note you that John Bo has markedly changed in appearance since the first game, and uh, well, so has Laura. Yeah. Laura has curls now instead of her weird yes, page for you. <laughs> Put some money in your shoe. She's also got the most southern voice ever to southern. Look, I'm going straight to the paper. Could possibly go wrong. Oh, Laura Bow. Uh, she's so naive. Just in case. God. I wonder what will happen. Daddy, what could go wrong? I've already God seen about 15 know. murders oh, in my short see. life. This couldn't happen again. Yeah, Not possibly. I'll never be proud of you, Laura. <laughs> That's you, not possible. You'll always be my, you're my mother's greatest disappointment. <laughs> Uh, Laura, uh, you need to get on the train. <laughs> honey. Honey. <laughs> honey, come back. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, she walked right into that pole. <laughs> <laughs> now she's just lying there. <laughs> oh, daughter, you're such an embarrassment to no. me. <laughs> oh, good, we finally got her on that goddamn train. We got an upgrade from, uh, Jessie in the first game. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this is the, uh, the train, uh, Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little Clock Tower 3 reference for ya. No. Oh. Excuse me, dear, are you a secretary? Actually, That's the only I'm reason I can imagine a woman would be right. <laughs> <laughs> it is the 1920s. Yeah. Which is, uh, yeah, Laura has to definitely deal with a lot of uh, sexism in this game. How nice. I'm Ermgard. Is this your first trip to the big city? Ermgard <laughs> looks like a propped up corpse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that everyone, someone is just moving the mouth up. <laughs> everyone kind of does. Well, at least Laura's moving her arm. Same thing the first time I came to New York. The tall buildings, the people rushing around. It was all so exciting. I'm sorry, I'm not really paying attention. I'm trying to do my crossword over here. <laughs> That's the worst southern accent I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the New York. I'm trying to do my crossword. <laughs> Step off the train. <laughs> oh, thank you, dear. You're very kind. I've enjoyed traveling with you. Oh no! <laughs> do you do douchebag? I saw what you did there. No, dear. I'll be fine. Thank you. <gasps> You're sure you'll be okay? Poor yes, Nora. She's just you. a Goodbye. sweet country girl in a big city. I bet she stole everything else that that one dude didn't. Goodness gracious, my suitcase! Can you spare a dime? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Certainly, sir. I'm always ready to help those who are less fortunate. You hide, mighty bitch. Well, that's just peachy. Give me all your money. Oh, my God! Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what Hello. the hell? That sucks to be Laura Bow. Very unfair. We so. <laughs> Welcome to New York. Kids. So we arrive in New York. Immediately, our bag is stolen, and this dude robs us. Yep. 
Welcome to the big city, Laura Bow. I was waiting for like a somebody to just run in and sucker punch her. <laughs> How did you get for being nice? She uh she maintains her optimism even though yeah, everything in the bad in the world happens to her. Gotta hand it to her. Yep. <laughs> Traffic's been backed up. There are uh, giant words on the street. <laughs> Destiny awaits. Nothing can stop me I kind of Safe love Laura on. just for her complete, like, no matter what happens, she's gonna be completely cheerful. I <laughs> I don't know why she just waits in front of the door for so long. Does she ever, <laughs> does she have... I really want to thank you for hiring me, Mr. Augustini. Uh oh. Newspaper on the back there looks like it's uh, Hindenburg Explodes. Yep. There's lots of references to the 1920s news. Hmm. And uh, there's a lot of skulls in this man's office. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Now I remember. Those are actual Hindenburg victims. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he says hello. He wanted to know if you still had that newspaper clipping on your wall about the explosion oh of the God, Hindenburg Oh my God, Laura, you stupid idiot. I'm sorry. I'm got, I got really bad eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> He let me into the wreckage so I could cover it for the paper. I rescued Rupert Hindenburg from his burning office, wrote about it, and made a name for I also himself. punched a bear on my way out of the burning embers of the Hindenburg. <laughs> I'm a man's man. <laughs> I'll do my best, sir. We usually just hire men for this job. It's We're a bit sexist back here in the 1920s. <laughs> That's uh, actually kind of funny. What? Well, you missed the line where he's I like, you're too it, small. You're just but really tidy. Yeah, she's <laughs> clearly a above... No, no, it's fine. All right, as a favor to my old pal, John. Uh, but no. Perspective, perspective is difficult, no. okay? No, it's fine. Thank you, he would have had to, like, kneel on the floor and, like, angle himself. <laughs> I mean, that said, he does appear to be, a, a, like, five times bigger than Laura. <laughs> yep. He is a giant man. I'm actually a bear in a man suit. You won't regret it, sir. I'm regretting it right I now. Have a nose for news. Just keep your nose There's a man in the background that every time he passes by the office window, like three pixels creep <laughs> in to the <laughs> So watch for it. Boop! <laughs> nice. He's passing a, like copies of himself. <laughs> Uh, act oh, one. Here we go. So we are going to go cover uh, any Egyptian exhibit at a museum here. We sure are. What intrigue will that bring us? Laura Baines, right? Laura Bow, sir. Laura Bow, asshole. And I believe you have the advantage. Crodfather Rhubarb Man. What? So His name is Crodfather T. Rhubarb. Crodfather Rhubarb? Crodfather. Crodfather? Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, made fun of a lot. I'm just gonna call you Rhubarb because I can't get your first name out of my mouth. I think they actually do just call him Rhubarb, if I'm remembering correctly. Never Ruby? mind. Rube, just maybe? Your leg. Why don't you take this desk right here and we'll get you settled in. That's very kind and then someone of comes and Mr. pulls the chair out from under her and she goes to sit. <laughs> Welcome to New York! <laughs> Same guy comes in and steals her coat off. <laughs> so here's the uh, interesting system. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm assuming it's very similar to King's Quest. Rube Rhubarb is one of the Trib's top writers. Among other things, he's in charge of writing obituaries. Did she change accents? No, this is the narrator. Oh, okay. She's a, she's a calm British lady. This is the science editor for the Trib. His latest report critiqued Goddard's demonstration of the first liquid fuel rocket, which traveled 184 feet in 2.5 seconds. Check out that butt. <laughs> at the moment, he's checking to see who signed up for the three-legged race at the annual picnic. Okay. Yep. The man poring over a layout is Eddie Bedletter, creator of the <laughs> has a terrible name. Column, oh, yeah. Dear Eddie. Welcome to the 1920s. Unfortunately, mm. Eddie names have evolved since then. And is estranged from they his just had the like, box of different words so and they would pull out two and form a name from them. This is our headquarters. Question. Yeah, this man is Stephen Lamp. Can we, can we go in the dude's bathroom? No, it clearly says gents. But 
The gent's sign leaves little doubt as to what lies behind yeah. the door. You shudder to think of it. Oh, oh, biting, uh, gender humor. <laughs> While this is an interesting approach, it serves no practical purpose other than your temporary That's amusement. That's the game making fun of me for misclicking. <laughs> Yeah. It's your official New York Daily Register News Tribune reporter's notebook with index tabs for people, places, and things. If you haven't guessed yet, this game has a lot of text. Yeah. A lot. How, how did you find as you're playing through this? Like, is it is the text interesting to hear at least? Um, yes. A lot of it is uh, pretty pretty funny. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, is you do have to listen to a lot of it because this is how you get a handle on a lot of the plot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of this seems like it's just flavor text, but... Uh... <laughs> so I imagine that we are probably going to get very confused at multiple points because I'm sure we'll be making uh, dumb jokes over some of the uh, some of the necessary information. Oh yeah, we're terrible for this, so... Uh... I'll try to keep you updated on the plot. <laughs> okay. Crowdfaller T. Rhubarb. Yup. God, terrible names. I wasn't joking. So, uh, this was me trying to figure out how to ask, uh, the question. What can you tell me? There you go. Time. So, it's actually kind of a clunky little interface where you have to click the name and then X the notebook, which seems very counterintuitive. So, I owe him a few. But uh, one of the things to do in Laura Bow is pretty much anyone you can ask questions, you want to go through almost every topic with them. Okay. Whether they have something to say or not, you know, you can't really predict, but you at least want to give it a go, because this is where you're going to learn a lot of your clues, a lot of the plot. Yeah. Uh, because basically in the game, uh, when you get to the uh, like pivotal plot point where you have to make decisions, you mm. you know the game isn't going to give you the information you have to look for it. it the okay yeah huh. so this is why this becomes important. What should I know about Archibald Carrington? Carrington hasn't been in the So long. as a result, do England, you feel like we do a lot more detective legwork in this game? Call me um, so I far as from what I've seen, yes. Yeah, uh, you're. Vanishing. You know, they have the benefit here of having more processing power to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's just, uh, I, I have to say so far, um, have you I mean, this this is kind of the introduction run? meant to just kind of get you acquainted with all the characters, uh, but it does it. sort of feel like busy work at all. the moment. Um, the whole game is kind of like this, and I'm honestly okay with it, because a lot of the dialogue is uh, pretty witty. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not witty, but at least has a good sense tell of character. Yourself, yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. What's to tell? I'm a reporter I actually really paper. love uh, Mr. Crodfaller T. Rhubarb. Yeah. He's uh, fairly dry, <laughs> and, but he's still nice to Laura. Yeah. You mean there's another Crodfaller T. Rhubarb? No and it is kind of fun to watch Laura's, cool. like... Uh, country, Niviette, yeah. uh, like contrasted with these uh, cynical New Yorkers. <laughs> Who are you calling a? Oh, Rube's your nickname, isn't it? Sorry, I forgot. Laura's just a Georgia peach. Oh, I'm expecting her to get the vapors at some point in this. Oh God, I hope. Tell me about Low Fan. Uh. <laughs> the old laundry guy. See, What's it's funny tell? because. Chinese names, they're they are different than ours, yeah. and sometimes they sound like salad dressing. <laughs> Low-fat <laughs> salad dressing, do you get it? Uh, it's so funny. I think so. Come on. <laughs> it's er when the dude's, when the, the first oh, dude's so name is Crodfather, Crodfather T. Rhubarb, I mean, at least they're being... Uh, Consistent with, with the their, terrible names. Yeah. Oh my god, there's so much to click on! Oh, get used to it. Uh, some of us have jobs, Laura. Can I please get back to work? No. Anyone in New York even the whole shebang. Second, don't worry about Sam. He's gruff and loud, but he's really a cream puff. 
Don't let them push you around. I do appreciate the animation they Lastly, did in the uh, portraits here. Yeah. The portraits uh, do feel more detailed than um, King's Quest VI. No Although that said, there are many boss. different versions of King's Quest VI <laughs> that some of them have updated Sorry. graphics. Didn't yeah. <laughs> I find it distracting how his sprite, uh, in this view, you know seems to have hair and a bald spot, but he is, like, completely bald here. Uh, consistency is difficult. I mean, you'd have to, like, talk to other people on the art team, and who Sometimes has time for that? Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you know, hand you the commissioner's party line. But once in a while, they'll give you something you can actually use. It feels like a very 90s color palette in his, uh... I do like how they've, uh, like, put in different spots of colors, almost like an Impressionist painting. Do you know what I mean? What can you tell like, me about me, um, man? not so much in Laura's, but in, uh, Crodfallers, you can see that he's kind of reflecting the background with the pink. See, and I sort of find it a little unappealing in that I feel like it's a little too random without harmony in the color scheme. The I don't know. I like it, but, again, like, Impressionism was, like, my favorite style of painting. Yeah. So... I don't know. The Keep away from I mean, the other thing is, it's it's clearly... <sighs> like, it was meant to be viewed at a smaller size, so you yeah, wouldn't notice it as much. that's true, too. Yeah, so right now it's really yeah, obvious, but if you were viewing it from far back, you know, yeah. wouldn't be quite as obvious. Squ squint your eyes, yeah, it'll look better. <laughs> I did get that far it in does, the investigation, though. Yeah. At least. Everybody, I want the you to squint your eyes. President, Do it. Stodgy old croaker named Archibald Carrington III. Cagey guy didn't seem overly concerned about the dagger. Yeah. You might see if you can get a little bit more out of it. <laughs> I also spoke with a Pippin Carter. Nasty little squirrel. So that's the, uh, like the world dick bag we talked to. Well, we didn't talk Apparently, to, but, uh... We, we saw in the, uh, the intro the there. Yeah. Egypt, along with some of the other with his junk mighty mustache. <laughs> now he was hot about the dagger. Took the whole thing like it was a personal stab at him. No pun intended. You intended that pun. Don't even lie. This is a Sierra game. Every pun is intended. Now we have... Do, okay, thank God. I was going to say, now do we have, like, five more people we need to ask him about? Oh, gosh, no. At this point, we are getting off pretty easy. <laughs> Luckily, uh, I mean, there are people you talk to, but as of yet, I've only met about five that you can actually ask questions to. Yeah. So it seems like it's going to be a lot more arduous than it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it'll get a little better once we get out of the newspaper office, but I want to at least go through everything so we have a rudimentary understanding of what's going on. Yeah. Um, and it's good practice to do that with everybody. He's what we politely call a stool pigeon. Basically, I love the guy Ziggy. For cash. <laughs> Amazing that the guy hasn't had his neck broken by now. I, last I heard, he was down at the train station robbing people. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I would, I would forgive so much about Laura Bow so far if she just swore up and down. No, Laura Bow so far, at least where I'm in the game, just goes through the game being utterly lovely yeah. to everybody, and yet very firm. So I like her quite a bit. Sure to put some money in your shoe, just in case. But then you're walking on it all day, and it's really annoying. It's a running joke through the game. A yeah. lot of people are going to tell Laura to put money in her shoe. Her dad did at the beginning. Yeah. Anyone you ask for advice about New York is pretty much like, oh yeah, put some money in Where your shoe. New York is a shithole, Laura, so always put money in your it's shoe. But then wouldn't robbers. like the robbers know to check your shoe? It's the place if everybody the knows this trick. <laughs> yeah, but maybe they're too polite. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're like, well, you know, we've got everything else. Let's just leave her shoe money. <laughs> she looks like she doesn't shower. What should I do with this note? Right, shitting it, Laura. <laughs> You're a reporter for having notes. How will you know to take notes? For... But why does it have all these notes already in what? it? No, no, this is because actually, uh... my notebook. And I was taking notes in it for the burglary investigation. It's your notebook now. And I don't care to discuss it. So anymore. he's a little uh... angry because essentially Laura came in and was like, I was promised a job! And so uh, she got to cover this story, which is far more interesting than what Mr. Uh, Rhubarb is doing. <laughs> Why would they give an important story to this noob? Well, we wouldn't have a, a, a game otherwise, so you should probably just be happy. I guess. Yeah. Plus, I mean, I guess John Bow did a really big favor for 
but yeah. So, you know. Were you able to get any leads at all about the burglary at the museum? Before you got kicked off the case, no, would you, were, were you able to basically solve it for me I so I could take Detective all the glory? Oh, this Laura Bow's solving another mystery. So, one thing I'm confused about is it's like her dad, like, in the beginning game, like, the first game, wasn't it kind of implied that he was a detective? Yeah, and... Store. Like, not, all not. the tips that we kept getting through the game came from her dad. Yeah, but at least I didn't see him mention that. He seemed like he was just a, a southern guy doing southern things. I don't know. Well, it, uh, the, the news editor mentioned that Lorbo's dad helped him. Like, oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, so maybe he was like a, a detective doing protecting the Hindenburg and he failed. <laughs> Detectives get hired to protect Hindenburgs. I not anymore. Blimps. <laughs> I guess you did such a shitty job this that uh, the market really fell desk. out. It's very old or exploded. and looks like it hasn't oh. been cleaned oh. thoroughly in years. That's too soon. But it's Probably too and serviceable. That desk is far too tall for any of them. Well, everything's it's bigger in New York. But even rhubarb is like the desk is up to his. Because uh, everything's bigger in New York. Ah. You've ever had as an official member of. The fourth estate. It looks like an old desk blotter. Oh, oh. You peel up a corner of the blotter oh, to God. reveal a small key. Yep. Don't touch it. You don't know where it's The key? <sighs> they have uh, not very good hitboxes, so <laughs> I have to do a lot of pixel hunting. You are you are having issues. Um, yeah. There we go. Up a corner of the blotter to reveal a small key. Rhubarb, meanwhile, is sitting you next to us, and he's just seeing us flail about at our desk. He's like, what the shit are you doing? Oh my god, this chick took my job! Uh. We couldn't have just, like, given a common, everyday this to Laura uh, in her interview slash job meeting. No, it, she had to find it in the blotter. Yeah. That's her first test it as a reporter. Like a Our first puzzle. Key. Oh, she failed the key test. <laughs> Not looking good for her here. You unlock the drawer. Unfortunately, the key permanently jams itself in the lock. Let's hope you never want to lock this drawer oh, again. Oh, okay. Maybe that will be relevant at some point. So I clicked on the wrong thing, and I stood up. So now we're going to sit back down at her desk. This is now your Oh, key. no. Shut up, Laura. Or narrator. You pick it up and place it in I'm your hoping purse. we'll find out who this narrator is later, but she might just be <laughs> Don't touch it. You don't know anything. No, I it was in the desk. I know exactly where that's been. Laura <laughs> Bow and the struggle to close a desk. <laughs> what the hell laugh was that? I sounded like a goddamn sprinkler. <laughs> don't make fun of me. <laughs> I think Laura Bow's doing weird things to you. Yeah, she turned me into a sprinkler. See, look how tall the desk is compared to Laura and Rhubarb. But he's bright and fine. A curiously heavy object in the trash. So let's just go through the trash can. Oh, oh a sweet. You pick it up and place it in your you purse. You place a lot of things in your purse. Our purse is... It's mighty. It's a mighty handbag. Yeah. I think this... This baseball has been autographed by Bob Ruth, Babe's unknown younger Baka brother. Waka. <laughs> Bob never made it out of the minor leagues because he was incapable of violence and therefore would not harm a baseball by hitting it with a bat. Um, how did he Bob even get in the minor leagues? Why did a he even want to do baseball then? Oh, I didn't realize you had to, like, play. A press pass. It reads, press <laughs> your pants while you wait. Low fats Chynese laundry, 5850 oh. Broadway Avenue, New York. Okay, I guess. Yeah. I'll, I'll give them that one. Pretty wacky. I do sort of appreciate how Laura Bow has her purse so that we actually have a uh, it acknowledge where we're stuffing all this crap. Yeah, unlike uh, in the first game where... <laughs> yeah, it just it's just somewhere on her person. Yep, yep. All right, off we go oh. into the wild world. 
And that's the end of part one. Oh god, I got mugged again. Oh god damn it, why? <laughs> <laughs> New York sure is scary. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, the game does pick up. So uh, if you're a little unimpressed by the first part, uh, please stick with us. There are some uh, glorious parts in this game. Such a triumphant return to Laura Bow. Well... Yeah, I, if I remember correctly, it's pretty true to form, because uh, yeah. you spent most of the first few parts going, when the fuck is this game starting? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and then second part was, bam, murder, oh shit. And you thought, oh yeah, now things are going to be exciting. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, Thanks, guys. We will see you with the next part. Hopefully you'll stick with us on this one. <laughs> see you guys then. Kisses. No. <laughs> People are upset that ancient Egyptian antiquities, the dagger of Amun-Ra among them, are being taken from Egypt. Put some money in your shoe. Laura Bow is journeying to New York to start a job as a reporter. Should have put some money in your shoe. Our first assignment is to covertly cover the robbery of the dagger of Amun-Ra from the museum. We're taking over the assignment from Crodfaller T. Rhubarb, and he's a bit salty over it. Crodfaller mentions two people of interest for Laura to interview, Museum President Archibald Carrington III and Pippin Carter. Pippin Carter, who is presumably the same Carter we saw on the docks in the beginning of the game, was the one who discovered the dagger in Egypt. Put some money in your shoe. Possible leads to follow up on include a potential informant named Ziggy, who can be found down at the speakeasy. We get our desk keys stuck in the lock, ensuring we can never properly secure anything up at the office.